Isn't God good? I have a uh, praise report testimony to tell you this morning. Uh, I asked you a few months ago to pray for two of my coworkers. One had emergency brain surgery and she's still here. She uh, had some complications with infections last week and had to go back to the hospital, but she's still here. My other co-worker's husband needed a new kidney. He's on the, whatever they call that list, in Dallas and in Fort Worth. They went to Shreveport and they were rejected, but they went to Dallas, Fort Worth, and they have been placed on both lists. They were told that if you sign up in Dallas, you would just be in the Dallas area, and they were advised to sign up for both, so they are on the waiting list for a kidney. It would be his uh, second kidney operation, but he's still here. This morning I come to you with an, an, another prayer request for my brother-in-law and my sister that live in Dallas. My brother-in-law had to be put in the hospital on Friday. My sister will turn 80 on next Sunday. And I want you to pray for both of them. My brother is 75 and he is trying to come see his big sister. Pray for my brother and his wife and family. Pray for my baby sister. She's not the baby, I'm the baby. But pray for Sandra and her husband and her children and grandchildren and pray for us. Uh, Kimmy came home Friday, she went back yesterday, all is well, uh, 4.0, senior to graduate in December. Lebrendo went back in, on Tuesday, he made it safely in that little piece of car we got him, <laughs> and he's running up and down the road more than I can keep up with. Jaleel is matriculating back to TJC on first class on Wednesday. Carson is a senior in his last year. Justice volunteered and joined the Army. He's in Oklahoma now. Uh, supposedly will graduate in February and be assigned to San Antonio. God is blessing us. And it's extremely good to see God blessing you. God healing, God working with us. If you don't mind, I'd like to sing Blessed Assurance if you would look for John chapter 21, John chapter 21, um, I'm stuck on this subject. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm stuck on this subject. Where do I go from here? We've been talking about where do we go. Now I'm going to go to where do I go from here. John chapter 21 verses 15 through 19. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God, born of 
of his spirit washed in his blood this is my story this is my song praising my savior all the day long this is my story this is my song praising my savior all the day long perfect submission perfect delight visions of rapture now burst on my side angels descending bring from above echoes of mercy whispers of love this is my story this is my song praising my savior all the day long this is my story this is my song praising my savior all the day long perfect submission all is at rest i and my savior am happy and blessed watching and waiting filled with his filled with his goodness lost in his love this is my story this is my song praising my savior all the day long this is my story this is my song praising my savior all the day long lord we thank you for the the blessings you've given us we thank you father for the relationship we have with you we pray father forgiveness of our sins and our transgressions we pray for each person gathered here now those who had a desire but the weather kept them in for those who are visiting other places we pray your blessings upon them we pray lord for the message for the word for the church for the people that you will strengthen us that you will enlighten us that you will give guidance vision and direction we pray father that your will be done that you be magnified glorified and lifted up in everything that we do draw us nearer and closer to you if it is your will in the name of jesus we pray amen john chapter 21 verses 15 through 19.
So when they had dined, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? He saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my lambs. He saith to him again the second time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? He saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my sheep. He saith unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Peter was grieved because he said unto him the third time, Lovest thou me? And he saith unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things. Thou knowest that I love thee. Jesus saith unto him, Feed my sheep. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, When thou wast young, thou girdest thyself, and walkest whither thou wouldest. But when thou shalt be old, thou shalt stretch forth thy hands, and another shall gird thee, and carry thee whither thou wouldest not. This spake he, signifying by what death he should glorify God. And when he had spoken this, he said unto him, Follow me. Where do I go from here? First Sunday, we talked about where do we go from here from Joshua chapter 1, verses 1 through 9. The message we tried to give as a church from Joshua, be strong, be of good courage, be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. Where do we go from here, Truvine, with our rich history and heritage, 151 years, where do we go from here as a church? Many of us are senior citizens. Most of us have been faithful in service, faithful in fellowship. And yet at this beginning of the year, we are at a crossroads, a new opportunity to serve and submit to God in ways that we've never done before. Where do we go in our spiritual life? Where do we go in serving God? What will we do? Then we spoke about where do we go from here in Exodus chapter 33, verses 12 through 23. Moses has been given the challenge. Moses has been given the directions to lead the children of Israel out of bondage in Egypt, out of slavery, out of the clutches of Pharaoh and his armies. How can Moses lead a people who are not warriors? How can he lead a people who are not soldiers, how can he lead a people who have no weapons out of bondage without strength, without power, without courage? Where do the people go from here? Where and how does Moses lead them? Well, we said if we hear from God, we ought to go. If God don't tell us to go, we ought to wait. If we hear from God and God tells us to go, we ought to go and do what God wants us to do. Where do we go from here? We will go wherever God tells us to go. We will do whatever he tells us to do. And we will be successful in what we do if we go based on what God would want us to do. This morning, as we look at our text, a very familiar passage of scripture is speaking about this man known to all of us by the name of Peter. 
It's talking about a man who has had a major setback. It's talking about a man who is facing his master, facing his Lord, the one that he turned his back on, the one that he denied three times in the garden. He is one of the 12 apostles. They're all named in the New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and Acts. And every time we see a list of the names of the 12 apostles, Peter is always listed first, and Judas is always listed last for obvious reasons. But the first name is always Peter. He was the leader of the 12, and the group of 12 was divided up into three groups. The first group being Peter, James, and John. They were those who were most intimate with our Lord. And Peter is always the one who stands out. Peter is always the one who is dominant. Peter is the one who speaks up and speaks out. But all of them were called to be preachers chosen by the Lord. They were the foundation to be the foundation of the church. And they were recipients of various revelations that were given to them by the Holy Spirit. They were teachers of the first generation of churches. And they taught the revealed truth that they got from Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. They were examples of the life that the Lord wanted them to live as a pattern for all of us to follow. But Peter is the dominant figure among the apostles. In fact, the four gospels are full of stories and lines that Peter speaks. And if you know anything about the apostle Peter, you certainly know most about Mr. Peter. After the name of our Lord, there is no other name mentioned more frequently in the four gospels than our brother Peter. Our Lord often speaks to Peter, and more often than to any of the other disciples, he talks to him about the various things that go on and the things that those disciples bring up in discussions with Peter. Peter is the spokesperson. Peter is the one that speaks on the things that the disciples bring to him in discussions that they're having out of the presence of the Lord. No disciple ever ventured to reprove his master but Peter. No disciple even so boldly confessed. No disciple ever so outspokenly acknowledged and encouraged our Lord as Peter did. He gave us his best efforts on both sides. He did good. He spoke wisely. He allowed the Holy Spirit to use him. And yet Peter had his highs and his lows, his ups and his downs. Doesn't that sound a lot like you and I? Many of us have plaques and certificates of attendance. Many of us have plaques and certificates of completion of the study of God's word. Many of us have accomplished much for the Lord, but the question I have for you this morning is what or where do we go from here? Where do I go from where I am right now to be more of what God would want me to be. Our Lord spoke words of blessings on Peter, words of approval, the likes of which he did not speak on any of the other apostles. And at the same time, he spoke the harshest things that ever came out of his mouth to Peter. 
The only one he spoke more harshly to was Judas. We all love and identify with Peter because he is so much like some of us. And the good story about Peter is this, that God can make something out of a very deceptive and especially one pretending who has feelings that are for God but are being influenced by another being influenced by Satan. God has to use weak people with numerous faults, and that is evidenced in the life of Peter. We all know that this journey that we are on will cause us sometimes to falter and fail. We all know that the Satan is doing everything he can to discourage us, to bring us down, to stop us from continuing to do what we believe God has directed us to do. And just like Peter, we could be in that predicament where we are denying him on our jobs. We're denying him in our neighborhood. We're denying him in some way, shape, or fashion. The gospel records Peter as the spokesman. And when you hear him speak, you can pretty much sure, be sure that on most occasions, he is speaking on behalf of everybody else. It is Peter who asks the meaning of a difficult saying. It is Peter who asks how often should we forgive. It's Peter who asks what is the reward for those of us who have left everything to follow you. It's Peter who asks about the fig tree that withers. It's Peter who asks about the things which Jesus said about the approaching end. It is Peter who comes to ask Jesus about his taxes. It is Peter who interrogates Christ, the risen Savior, when he comes back. It's Peter is the spokesman. Peter is the one who speaks out. And Peter was not, not unlike any of us. He showed strength and he showed weakness, both because that's what is in us and that's what we are. Sometimes we're strong. Sometimes we're weak. Sometimes we're serving well. And sometimes we come up short. But Christ wants us, God wants us to submit all of our soul, all of our spirit to him so that day by day we are drawing nearer and closer to him. We're becoming more and more and more like him. Peter had two great revelations. In Matthew chapter 16, Jesus comes to him asking him, and the disciples, who do men say that I am? He's asking, what is the popular opinion about me? What are the people saying about me? Some say that you are John the Baptist. Some say that you are one of the prophets, Jeremiah or Elijah. Some say that you are a good man who has come and performing great miracles. But Jesus Ask them and Peter and a very important question that all of us need to be able to answer. Who do you say that I am? And Peter declares to him, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. That's one of his great revelations that the Holy Spirit anointed him with and allowed for him to be able to. To see. The second revelation is found in John 6. Jesus had a lot of followers. The disciples were clamoring to be with him because he was feeding the sick. He was giving sight to the blind. He was giving those men who were lepers a new way of walking and an ability to be amongst their family once again. The woman at the well had met him and he knew all about her and there were many people coming to see 
who this Jesus was. But Jesus began teaching them and showing them what was expected of them. And they went away because his teachings were too hard. And Jesus asked the disciples, will you also go away? And Simon Peter answers him and said, Lord, whom shall we go to? You have the words of eternal life. And we can answer that question this morning. Where can I go to find a savior like Jesus? Where can I go to find a Jesus that loves me the way he loves me? Where can I go to find a savior who has love as his first name? Where can I go to find him who is a bright and morning star? Where can I go to find someone who is patiently leading me and guiding me and walking with me? Where can I go to find a shepherd that supplies all of my needs? Just like Peter, I would ask the question this morning, where can we go to find someone like him? He had great revelations he had great reward because if you go back to chapter 16 in Matthew it tells of him and the disciples being made one of the cornerstones of the Baptist of the church God took him inside and told him that you will be one of my disciples that you will be one who will help to build the church. You will be one who will help to instill the teachings of the church. But we find him today in the 21st chapter at one at the lowest moment of his life, at one of the lowest times of his life. A man who declared to the world that I will die for him. A man who declares to the world that I'll go with you wherever you may go sits before him today in our text as one who has denied him three times. And then we see where will Peter go from here? Where will Peter go after he has denied him? The recipient of of great revelation, the recipient of great reward, a part of the foundation of the church. He who spoke up and said too much about not allowing Jesus to go to the cross now stands before him. He's denied his Lord on three separate occasions in three different locations and probably multiple times. But before we run to condemn Peter, we need to recognize the fact that he is present. He's the only one there. None of the other disciples is present. All the rest of them have taken off and run off and are hiding. But he's there and it's his courage enough to be there that allows for us to know no matter how far we fall down we have a savior who will have mercy upon us when Mary and Martha went to the grave Jesus met them and told them to go tell the disciples and Peter to come and meet me and I will be there in the midst of them. It's the kind of failure that only happens to the brave. It only happens to the people who are in a position where it can happen. It only happens to people who get close to the enemy. So is that the end of the story for Peter? He's denied him. Is Peter now useless? No. He received a great revelation. He was given a promise of great reward. He did great things. He committed the crime of rejection. But there is a recommissioning given to Peter. If you go to John chapter 21 
after the resurrection, Jesus told the disciples to go to Galilee and meet me there. Peter had not done that. Peter had gone out to go fishing, went back to what he was comfortable doing, went back to the thing that he knew well, and he still was unsuccessful. They couldn't catch anything until our Lord and our Savior shows up and tells them to cast on the other side. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Do you love me more than these fishing implements? Do you love me more than these boats that you're working out of? Do you love me more than the things that you have returned to? Peter must have felt pretty low. He must have felt pretty bad. He could have said I was a colossal failure. I failed you and I denied you and I turned away from you. I'm not worthy to be in your presence. I'm not worthy to do the works that you have set before me. But Jesus keeps prodding. Jesus keeps trying to move him to a new level, just like he's trying to do with each one of us. Do you love me more than these things that stand before you? Do you love me more than family and friends? Do you love me more than your comforts? Are you willing to go and do the things that I've asked of you to do? He asked him a third time, Peter, lovest thou me more than these? And Peter, seemingly it got on his nerves. Seemingly he was tired of him asking him the question because he felt like his response was adequate. He felt like what he had said was good enough. Lord, you know that I love you. But Jesus was trying to get him to move to a higher level in his relationship with him. He was trying to get him to move from where he was in his comfort zone to an uncomfortable position of submitting to the Lord's will. And that's what he wants to do with each one of us. In order for us to move to where he wants us to be, we're going to need some fortitude. We got to be strong and determined that no matter what comes my way, no matter what comes in my direction, I'm going to do what the Lord is asking of me to do. Moving forward requires focus. Peter, I need you to focus on the things that I'm saying to you. I need you to focus on the teachings that are found in your word. I need you to focus on the things that I'm asking of you to do. Moving forward requires failure. We're not going to always be on top of the world. We're not going to always get it right. Sometimes we're going to stumble and fall along the way. But if we keep going forward in the name of Jesus, he's promised that we will not fail. If we're moving forward requires faith. Peter, we see if we look and see him after this day in the book of Acts, we see him when he stands forward to choose a person to take the place of Judas. We see him preaching on the day of Pentecost and mid thousands came to submit their will to the Lord. We see him preaching and teaching and being thrown in jail and those telling him that he must stop preaching. But Peter declares to them, I must be about my father's business. I must tell of his goodness and his love and his mercy. I must tell somebody that he is a savior who got up from the grave with all power in his hand. Where do I go from here? I must go and teach. I must go and preach. I must go and testify of the goodness of the Lord. I can't keep it to myself. 
It's like a fire shut up in my bones. I've got to tell somebody the good news that there is a Savior who lives and he lives within my heart. I must tell somebody the good news that he got up with all power in his hand. Change the way I think. Change the way I walk. Change the way I talk. And I know a few good people over on that corner of Oakwood that tell the same story. We serve a living Savior, and he is the world to us. We serve a living Savior who has all power in his hand. Power to convince. Power to convict. Power to strengthen us in the midst of trials and tribulations. He's got the power to heal the sick, give sight to the blind, even today. And if we would just submit to his will, submit to his way, and allow him to have his way, God will get the glory. God would be lifted up. Where do we go from here in our spiritual journey with the Lord? Where do we go? Where do I go? This morning there may be one who is in the midst of struggles, in the midst of strife, there may be one here that is coming out of the valley of the shadow of death. There may be one who is ascending to heights unknown. And you want to let somebody know about your Savior and your Lord. How he's with you on the mountain. How he walks with you and carries you sometimes through the valley of the shadow of death how he's able to instill the confidence no matter what we face, no matter what we're going through, that he's going to be with us. He's never going to forsake us. He keeps all of his promises. done as the Lord has commanded there will always be room in our father's kingdom this time we prepare to receive our tithes and offering will a man rob God yet you say and where have we robbed thee in tithes and offering you are cursed with a curse for you have robbed me even this whole nation